Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily where I talk about all of the crafty goodness that I have been up to. Today is April 5th, 2021, and it is a cross stitch episode this week, um, and a very exciting one. Um, if you're here for last week's knitting episode, you would know that I have hit 3,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I did a giveaway over on my knitting episode last week, and I will be doing a giveaway later on in this episode for all of my cross stitch friends. So thank you so much for 3,000 subscribers. It means a lot to me. I can't believe that I'm at 3,000. I never expected that to happen. Um, so yeah, I want to do a giveaway just to thank all of you guys for joining me and subscribing and watching my videos. So yeah, stick around for that. But like I said, today is a cross stitch episode. Let's jump right on in. There are a couple places you can find me on the internet. The first being on Instagram at birch.and.lily. And then if you want to find all of my patterns and knitting designs, you can find them on both Ravelry and Lovecrafts. And I will have both of those linked down below for you. So I do have one finished object this episode, and it's kind of an exciting one because it ends this big long saga. <laughs> so let's jump into that first. So I have been working on all of the tiny little like 70 by 70 months from Little House Needleworks for I don't even know how long now, like probably a year and a half, two years, and I finally finished the last one. So this here is March. Of course, it's not ironed, because why would I ever do that? Uh, <laughs> this is March. It is stitched up on 32 count raw natural linen. I used all of the called for colors, and they actually do come in this pattern. They are included, all of the threads. Um, so I used all of the called for, and I did stitch this two threads over two linen threads. And I am really happy. I think I saved my favorite one until last, which is kind of fun. Um, I love anything with sheep on it. Uh, obviously, because I'm a knitter, so I don't know. It was really fun. Too bad that March just passed and I won't be able to put this up until next year, but I'm really excited that it's done and that every single month is done now so I can finally start switching them out. I have a little wooden board. Um, I believe I've shown it many episodes ago, but I got it at Hobby Lobby and it's just a little square with like a stand on the back of it. I got it in like the unfinished wood objects section of Hobby Lobby um, and I have just been making all of these into like a little flat lay, just wrapping it around some sticky board and magneting them to that board and switching them out every month. I am so excited to have all of these finished. It was one of those things where for a while I got bored, so I set them down, but I knew I wanted to finish all of them because why would you only have half of the months finished? So to finally have them done is amazing. The project bag that this was in and all the other ones were in is finally free. It has been held up for like two years with these in it. So yay, my March Little House Needleworks little cross stitch is done. So that is my only finished object. I haven't fully finished anything either in the past two weeks, um, but I do have quite a few works in progress that I have been working on to show you guys. Let's start off with something that I have not pulled out in quite some time. Um, if you've been watching me for quite a while, you will have seen this many episodes ago. If you are new here, this will be new to you. And while I'm saying that, I might as well also say, if you're new here, thank you so much for checking me out. If you're a returning viewer, you're incredible too. Um, I love all of you and it means a lot, so thank you. But anyways, this project here is Merrily Merrily We Welcome Spring. It's from Blackbird Designs. I have it in a little project bag with frogs. <laughs> Super cute. I believe this one is from Pretty Southern. So for this project, I am using all of the called for threads minus one. Um, I believe it was Mountain Mist was out of stock when I kitted this up. So I am using St. Bernard from Classic Colorworks instead. Yes, um, Mountain Mist is a gentle arts thread. And yeah, they seem to never be in stock. I don't know, lately, I guess, it's not their fault, everything's really far behind, but they definitely are harder to find and they were hard to find at the point I kitted this as well. Um, but these are all of the called for threads here. It is a mix of Classic Colorworks, Gentle Art, and Weak Style Works. Uh, this pattern I believe also comes with a DMC conversion if you love stitching with DMC, so lots of options. And I am stitching this project up on a 40 count linen. I'm using 40 count country mocha. It is not the call for fabric. 
think the call for is Oaken, and I couldn't tell you what count. <laughs> um, but here we are. I have done so much since the last time I showed this, and no one probably remembers because it's been so long. Um, but this is kind of, I pulled this out, and this has been a project that's been like one of my longest standing ones. And I pulled it out and I was really enjoying it, so I've kind of just been sticking with it because I figure if I'm having fun on it, let's just go and see if I can finish it, I guess. So it has been getting a lot of love. What have I done? I've worked a lot on the border. The border is almost finished. Um, I have some berries to fill in on the left side there. Um, I think the right berries. This is a really awkward position. <laughs> um, yeah, the berries along the right are all finished and the leaves. And then I do have the berries to fill in the bottom. Plus you can see there are two little like greenery things missing because I realized they were messed up and I just pulled them out. So I haven't had a chance to fix them yet. Um, I also finished a couple borders in the alphabet section there. And I think I actually finished that final blue row of alphabet as well since last time. And then the most exciting new thing is this urn with the flowers. That was not started at all last time. So it's almost finished. Um, I just have to do Smyrna crosses in this little blank section on the pot and that will be done. There is a, another one of those on the opposite side at the bottom in different colors. So that will probably be the next thing I pick to do. We'll see. But I've been getting a lot done on this and it's been really fun. Um, I don't know if I mentioned I'm stitching this with one thread over two linen threads um, on the 40 count vintage country mocha. Granted, actually, I think once you hit 40 count, it's only called country mocha. But yeah, I am really glad I pulled this out because I've really been enjoying it and it's been a fun project to work on. So I think my goal is going to be to get this finished within the next couple months. And I think it's totally doable. Like, the border is probably the most complicated thing on this whole piece. And once I get that finished, it's just all fun little motifs on the bottom there and it'll be done. So yeah, really enjoying working on that. Um, and I'm glad I pulled it out again. I do have a couple mistakes in there, but I don't know, I've fudged it enough that I can't see they're there and so I'm not gonna point them out and it's fine. <laughs> they're all in the border. I screwed up on the counting on the border like way at the beginning and didn't notice until I tried to connect it. And at that point I was not about to fix it. So we all make mistakes, makes it unique. So the next thing I pulled out for a little bit is a big project. This is my whole collection of salt boxes from Plum Street Samplers. She has a pattern with two little patterns included in it for every season. So spring, summer, fall, winter, and I am putting them all together in one piece. And I was able to look at the fabric. I was trying to figure out, I couldn't for the life of me remember the name of the fabric that I chose to use for this piece. Um, but it is a 36 count oaken, which I'm stitching one thread over two linen threads. And I am using all of the called for colors. These, all of these here are the colors for every single one, um, spring, summer, all of them. So this ring is pretty full, um, but there's some DMC in here. There is some weeks and classic color works. I don't think there's any gentle, oh, there's one gentle art, it looks like, but mostly DMC weeks and classic color works. So I love these. I don't know, something about holding up and just like looking at all of this embroidery floss is so satisfying. <laughs> And I forgot to mention, another pretty southern bag here is holding this project. So like I said, this is on a 36 count oaken. I'm just going to fold the fabric up because it's a very large piece and I haven't stitched on tons of it yet. <laughs> but since the last time you saw this, I have finished the first one. So this little Polaroid here is from the Winter Salt Boxes by Plum Street Samplers. It is salt box number one and it is totally finished. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. It's so cute with the back stitching in the windows and the little stars above the trees. And then if you can see right below it there, I have started the second winter one. Um, 
I will try and pop a picture of what that one will look like up on the screen here. But it's super cute. It's a whole bunch more little houses and then there's some reindeer flying above everything. So as you can see, I decided how I wanted to orient these. I wasn't 100% sure what I was gonna do. I just knew I wanted them all on one piece. So I'm going to do winter, winter, and then it'll be spring, spring, and so on. Um, but they will all be together on one piece and kind of look like a whole bunch of different Polaroids. Um, I decided to do it this way just so that it would be something I could keep up all year as opposed to having to switch it out for every season. Um, I'm pretty happy with that choice. So the white on this though, that is my only complaint. <laughs> the white at the bottom takes forever. But I told myself <laughs> that I couldn't start the second one until that was done because I knew if I left it, I would never do it. And then I would have a whole bunch of white left to fill in at the end and I would hate it. <laughs> so I told myself that I had to do all that before I went to the next one. Um, I have seen a lot of people who have just totally skipped that white section altogether or took out a whole bunch of it at the bottom so it wasn't so much to stitch, but I really like how it looks like this. Looks like a little photograph. So yeah, happy to have that first one done and excited to be continuing on to the next one. And I like how I have these laid out because now if I get a little bit bored of the winter one, I could easily move over to the spring one and get that one started as well. So I have some options. I like that. I like options. So this is my one new start of this episode. Um, I've had this kitted up for a little bit and I just felt like something new. I think last week it was that I started this, but I um, felt like something new. So I figured this is all kitted up. It's cute. This is what I'm gonna start. <laughs> I have this project here in this bag. This is from the Sagan Stitch on Etsy. As always, oh, I didn't even know she had a little tag there. Hmm, Sagan Stitch. How I never noticed that before, I do not know. Um, but I will try and make sure that I link all of the project bag makers down below because I know if it was me, I would want to be able to find everything easily if I was interested in purchasing from someone. So cute little bag. It has a little, which I'm holding tight to so it doesn't make too much noise, but a little zipper pull on there too. Um, love it, really well made. So this is the first project that I have done from the Scarlet House. This is a perfect world. Um, I am using all of the called for threads for this project, all the called for overdides. The pattern does come with DMC. Um, as well. And actually it does call for one DMC, just 310. So I usually will make little like gift tags almost in a way for all of my DMC so that they're hanging like the rest of these because I really like to pull my floss off of these. Um, and on that note, I am traveling to my sister's wedding in a couple weeks, which means my videos are gonna be all out of whack. So I have ordered the tool to be able to do some tutorials for you guys. I'm gonna be recording some knitting tutorials, some cross stitch tutorials. Um, I will do how I get my floss off of these rings and how I um, like cut it for the tags and stuff. I'll try and make a little video of that. But while I am gone, celebrating my sister's wedding, I'm so excited. Um, that's what I will be posting is my plan. Um, so if you're interested in how I do that, keep an eye out in the next couple weeks. Uh, anyways, A Perfect World by The Scarlet House, all of the call for overdides, and I am stitching this up on 40 Count Mallow, which is my favorite fabric. So this is where I am. Um, got lots of words done. Words always go so fast. I love words. And half of this pattern is words, which is really helpful because once I get to the bottom, there's some solid black fill in, which is going to take a long time. Um, but really enjoying this. It's so cute. This little flower is like one of my favorite things on the whole project because it's just so tiny and sweet. Um, but I guess I can read to you guys what it says because I'm sure my picture wasn't up long enough or you missed my picture or I don't know. Um, but it does say on there, in a perfect world, you would find me here with the birds and the flowers and the dogs and the deer. And my yard has birds, flowers, dog, a dog, 
and mini deer. So I thought this was quite fitting um, and I think it'll look really cute hung up in our house. Plus it's quite sampler-esque and I've definitely been into samplers and projects with like houses and stuff on them lately so this has been really fun. Um, and I did work on this for probably a couple days straight. Um, I think that was before I pulled out Merrily Merrily and then that's really what has been getting all my work over the past little while but super cute project. This is all stitched in 310 which I love. Um, there really isn't that many call for overdides in this so it's definitely a more reasonably priced project and if you stitch it on Mallow, Mallow is a really cheap linen so yeah if you're looking to do something with overdye threads but you don't want to spend too much money this project might be a good one for you. I can't remember let me look what the pattern actually calls for for fabric. So it calls for a 40 count meadow rue from Lakeside Linens and Lakeside Linens is insanely hard to find lately so if you are looking for a fabric for this I would highly recommend Mallow. It um, looks really good with all the threads and stuff so and you can save some money. Okay two more things that I've been working on. I've just done a tiny bit on both of these but of course I want to show you uh, it's nice to kind of see progress and then after I show those two we will get into the giveaway don't worry I have not forgot so in this project bag also from the pretty southern is the Savior's Praise by Shakespeare's Peddler this has been a long going project but I love it so much it's definitely a big one so don't mind my mess uh, <laughs> actually those look relatively neat for once these are all of the call for threads for the project there is a whole bunch of anchor threads on here if you're not familiar with anchor it's an equivalent to DMC basically and then the pattern calls for four different overdides from Weeks Styleworks. works so I'm using call for threads for this um, oh I forgot to mention with um, perfect world I am stitching that one linen thread over two or sorry one thread over two linen threads anything on 40 count which is I think I'm only oh minus the one I'm only stitching on 40 count right now um, but all of those I do one thread a floss over two linen threads okay back to a savior's praise I am stitching this up on the call for beach brew linen beach brew is dyed up by r, &R reproductions also kind of hard to find right now unfortunately but if I'm holding it up to mallow it's relatively close it's slightly lighter but not too much of a difference so if you're looking for a fabric to stitch this up on I think mallow would be actually a decent choice so this is getting big I'm gonna slide back a little bit here we go yes it's all in the screen this is where I am I'm still working away on page three of the pattern um, but now that I've given you a look, I will fold this up and kind of show you what I have worked on over the past couple weeks. Um, so I think I actually only pulled this out yesterday. I don't think I pulled it out any other time in the past two weeks. Um, but I had fun on it yesterday for sure. I was really only working on this border here. Um, so I put in kindness. And I really filled, I filled in a whole bunch of flowers and stuff, some of these little red dots. I think all of this was done last time. I still haven't finished this basket, I really should do that. Um, but I was just enjoying doing like simple tiny little things over here. So, yeah. Kindness was very easy to stitch. Um, that uses one of the overdides, I think it's River Rock from Week Dye Works. Um, so how much further down does it go this page go okay so I really have, I only have about half of this third page done um because it cuts at about here so up above here is a different page and down below her is another one and it goes till about probably there so I still have a lot to do on this page it's pretty full there's only a little bit of words on it so the words is what really goes fast and the motifs take a lot longer because there are a lot of color changes on this piece which is good and bad it definitely adds interest like I'm sure you can see all these leaves are different colors and so it takes it takes a lot of work mostly just because you're switching so many colors but 
sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't, so when I am enjoying switching all the colors, that's when I pull this out. But I'll give you one more peek at the whole thing. Really enjoying this, love this piece. This is something that I really don't care how long it takes because I think it's absolutely beautiful and I can't wait until it is finished. So, and actually I showed this piece to my grandma at Christmas and she was like, if you don't have anyone to give this to or you don't want to hang it up in your house, I would like it. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. no, too much work is going into this. I love you, but this is mine. <laughs> so... Anyways, that made me laugh, but um, enjoying this, liked getting a little bit of work on it. Like I said, I only really worked on it yesterday. I figured Easter would be a good day to work on this, so yeah. One final project and we will move into the giveaway. This here is Spring Squirrel from the Blue Flower. Um, again, this is kind of more of a collection of pieces that I'm doing. I have Halloween Squirrel and Summer Squirrel finished, so I'm working on Spring right now. This bag is from Erica D. House. Um, I think I looked up last time and she is still making bags, but she hasn't recorded a floss tube in a while. If my memory serves me correct, I will link her Etsy shop down below in the description. So here are all the called for threads that I'm using for this project. They are all gentle arts with the exception of one classic color works, two classic color works that are in here. Um, but lots of pretty little springy colors. And I am stitching up this piece as well on 40 count mallow, one thread over two linen threads, and this is where I am. So since the last time, what have I done? Um, I think I finished the middle of this plant, finished the pot, I had just a tiny bit at the bottom, I added this watering can, and I started on the squirrel. So I feel like I've got quite a bit done. There are some things that I've had to skip by because I am missing one um, over dyed floss. I think it is, let's see, Adobe from Gentle Arts. I think it's from Gentle Arts. I gotta look now. Yes, it is Adobe from Gentle Art. Um, so I have had to skip by some things on this, like the corner here and I think something on the squirrel as well. It might have been in his hat. Um, but I've had to skip a couple things because I'm just waiting for Adobe to come back in stock. Um, but like I said, the Gentle Arts is having a hard time catching up from everything that happened last year. So whatever, it's fine. I can still work on the project even though I'm missing that thread. So I'm loving this. This is a smaller one. So it's I find it nice to have things like this to work on in between all my massive projects so that I can get a finish once in a while and get that satisfaction. So, because I'm definitely a process stitcher. I love the process of it. Um, but once it's done, will I frame it? I don't know. <laughs> I honestly, I enjoy making it. And then when it's done, like I have good intentions and I know exactly where I want to put everything that I'm working on my house. But it's me getting around to getting it framed. That is the issue. So this one has a place though because I did frame the Halloween squirrel and he actually is still up because I haven't had anything any other season to replace him with because I don't have winter or autumn done. So it's been Halloween in our house for a while. <laughs> but soon I will have either the spring one to put up or I have the summer one finished and I can put that one into the frame. I'll actually be on season with the squirrels for a while. So yeah, there is that one. And like I said, now that I've showed you all my works in progress, I do have a giveaway. So let's jump into that. I do have three different patterns that I'm going to be gifting. Um, these are all things that I accidentally bought a duplicate of. Whoops. Um, <laughs> but I thought I would pass them on to you guys. So let's get into the nitty gritty of this giveaway. Please be subscribed like the video um, and please be in the USA and Canada. Unfortunately shipping is a disaster right now where I live and it's just easier for me to keep it in the US and Canada and make sure that it does in fact get to the recipient. If you leave a comment down below with whatever word I tell you for each pattern um, I will enter you into whichever ones you want. So the first pattern that I have is from Hands-On Design. I'm gonna have to take this out of the bag, sorry. 
So this here is from Hands On Design. This is Carrots and Cottontail Farm. So if you're interested in winning this one, um, put a comment down below with carrots in it. And I will search for someone who has subscribed, liked, and had carrots in their comment. So the second one I have here, this was a recent finish. I actually finished this on the last cross stitch episode. This is Let It Snow Bungalow from Hands On Design. Um, let's do the word, I hate to say the word snow, because I don't want snow right now, but let's say snow. So if you're interested in winning this one, have snow in your comment. You can enter to win all of these patterns. Totally fine, but you will only win one. So if I draw you twice, you'll win whichever one I drew first. Does that make sense? And finally, I have one of the animal stacks here from Plum Street Samplers. This is Snort Stack. Super cute. And a really fast stitch, too, if you're looking for something to finish quickly. Um, we'll say stack for this one, if you would like to be entered to win. Okay, so I'll run through that again real quick. Please be subscribed, like the video. USA and Canada only, unfortunately. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then if you want to be entered to win Carrots and Cottontail Farm, have carrots in your comment, let it snow bungalow, snow in your comment, and snort stack, have stack in your comment. Like I said, you can enter all of them, totally fine. Um, but I will be drawing for this giveaway. I think I will announce the winners actually on next week's knitting episode because I am traveling. Um, I would wait and do it on the cross stitch episode, but I really don't know when that's going to be, and I want to be able to draw these prizes and get them mailed out to you before I leave for my sister's wedding. So I will be announcing these in a week on the next knitting episode. Um, I'll also be announcing the knitting giveaway winners on that episode too. If you haven't entered that, check out last video. Um, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me down in the comments. Um, yeah thank you so much for joining me and thank you again for 3,000 subscribers it means so much to me if you like what you saw today please consider subscribing or just subscribe to enter the giveaway but don't unsubscribe after because I am watching you <laughs> I know I will know um, but yeah please consider that like my video as well that helps me out a lot gets my video out there to other people and I will see you guys again next week for a knitting episode bye <music>